First of all, I'm Debbie Case. I am the community outreach nurse at uh, Amita Health St. Mary's Hospital, Kankakee. I'm also a nurse in the library when we can start that program back up again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about living in a COVID-19 world. First of all, Pat, good morning. Good morning. And if you need the restroom, the restroom's over here and it's open. First of all, one of the things that I like to start with is, in my mind, the virus is not political. Even though it's become very political in our country, I am not political about the virus. My views are from what I have um, learned and researched as a nurse. And the only true uh, information that I believe comes from the health department. So from the Kankakee County Health Department, from the Illinois uh, Department of Health, or from the Center of Disease Control. So I am coming at it through a health perspective, which I think that that's the way it should be totally. I don't think it should be political, Democrats versus Republicans. So that's my little, little spiel, spiel on it. So first of all, I always like to say, what is COVID-19 or the coronavirus? I believe that it was a man-made virus, but that's Debbie Case's view. Um, and it is a rapidly transmittable virus. Every year we lose many people from the regular flu, but the regular flu or seasonal flu doesn't appear to spread as rapidly as or be as easily contracted from person to person as the seasonal flu. And it also is more a respiratory virus than what we consider a normal seasonal virus. So what are some of the symptoms of uh, COVID-19? Well, it's a fever. It's a fever above 99.5. So if you have a persistent fever of, of that, you have a cough that is unusual to you. You have difficulty breathing. Now some of us already experience some shortness of breath, which is normal for us. So it would be what is above that normal shortness of breath. The uh, a absence of taste or smell that just happens. That, that appears to be quite a, a, a unique symptom to this, other than a head cold, which, you know, stuffs everything up. Then you have your normal body aches, diarrhea, uh, persistent diarrhea, and, and so forth. Well, when you have the, when you experience those symptoms, what do you do? Now, if they're not life-threatening, you would phone your healthcare provider and then go over everything with them. Some healthcare providers, which most in the area are doing in-person office visits now, if not, there's, they're doing those telehealth visits, which can be per your computer, which can be per your cell phone. Um, but it's really important to go through everything with them. You know, I, this is when this started, this is when this started. And then they'll determine 
whether you need a test to see if it is actually the COVID-19. Uh, now, the testing is done for a nasal swab. Now, they're, they used to be nasal pharyngeal, but they've perfected them, so they're not as uncomfortable as what they were before. Uh, they're still done per drive-through at either hospital. Uh, you go armed with your tests, uh, and I always tell people, phone first. Always important to phone first. And you'll, we'll swab both sides of your nose, and that's the test. Well, hello, are you here for the COVID-19? Yes, grab a seat, come on over here and, and have a seat, sir, welcome. We were just kind of going over uh, the symptoms and, and what to do when uh, you are symptomatic. Yep. And yeah, go ahead, get it up all nice over your nose there. Okay, very good. So we um, once you've talked to your doctor and they they said that you need the test, then you would bring that test to either hospital. Now Aunt Martha's is still doing COVID-19 testing, and it's all drive through or, or so forth. <clears throat> it takes at least 24 hours to get the, the test results. And um, so that's what, <laughs> what, you, what you do. That's okay. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Pat, do you have any questions about, like, the symptoms and how they may vary from the seasonal flu? Uh, don't have questions about that. Um, I just am curious about the validity and how we can trust the numbers that they're giving us. Okay. Of the tests. Okay. Now, I always say you can historically go back on the county's Facebook page or website and see because they've actually, a, a week or so ago, kind of explained the numbers better. People, if you were positive for the COVID test, you were only counted once, even though you may have had subsequent positive tests after that initial one, you're never counted again. So you're a one time. So if I'm positive, if Debbie Case is positive, she's counted as positive once. Even though I may have a other positive testing, my name is never in that number again, because it could just be it's going to take me that amount of time to get the virus out of my system. So, like, um, do you, does that answer your question? Any more questions that about the numbers? That because I kind of wrote down what I even included it in the packet you're going to okay, get. Good. Like waiting for my test results. The t I tested negative and. But it, it is on the Facebook page. I believe it was about a week, week and a half ago okay. that they had that on there. But like the update from yesterday, because they really changed the updates. If you're looking at Facebook, I always tell people wait till about four o'clock in the evening because then you're assured it's there because the results from yesterday. Now we realize this is a difference of over the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday, so it's not a one day, you know, result. It's at least a 48 hour result. There were 39 new cases. So that means every positive, t 
test, whether it's from St. Mary's, Riverside, Aunt Martha's, and that person hasn't been positive before, well, even if they are positive before, those test results are turned into the health department because they have staff that does contact tracing. So what does that mean? That means that if Debbie Case is positive, the health department's gonna call me and they're, gonna, they're the ones that's gonna keep track of how I'm doing. So they're gonna call me, they're gonna say, who lives with you, who have you been in contact with, and then they're gonna call them. Now, in this scenario, let's say there's a man and a wife that live together. The husband is positive, the wife is negative. Well, they're gonna ask to isolate themselves from one another. The person who's positive will, have, will be called every day. The person who's negative will be called every day. Hello, hi Lorraine, you wanna come over on this side, please? Thank you. And um, what they will do for that positive person is, it has to be 10 days from when you were first positive, but you don't have this, you don't have a fever three days consecutively without any medication. Um, you don't have the, uh, a new cough. Your symptoms are alleviating themselves. And once that happens and 10 days has elapsed, you'll be free to go back to work um, and resume your pre-positive test lifestyle. The negative, the husband, or I can't remember which one I said was positive, but the house person who was negative will have to be isolated for 14 days. No matter, the positive person will probably return to work before the negative person. What, why is that? Well, any, any virus, any antibiotic, um, bacterial infection usually has a 14-day incubation period. So when, I, when I'm in contact with that person, it may take me 14 days to develop symptoms. So that's what that 14 day mark is. And that's why that person is isolated for 14 days, is because of the possibility of developing symptoms in that 14 days. And when you're symptomatic, it appears to be, um, or that first 14 days or so is when you appear to be more uh, susceptible to passing it on. Now, the other portion of this that makes this so highly contagious is you can have the virus, be no symptoms or asymptomatic, and be contagious. Like with our childhood diseases, like so, you know, with the measles and that, you know, you're really more contagious before that measle pops out. So it's, it's kind of the, the same here, but the person may never have symptoms. And they are, they have the virus and they're passing the virus from person to person and not even aware of it. So the normal seasonal flu, uh, for lack of a better word, is not as contagious. It's not as I have the I have it and I don't know I have it. Usually the seasonal flu, you are symptomatic. You don't walk around with the seasonal flu not knowing you don't have the seasonal flu. So that's another difference. So you know <clears throat> between the 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 COVID virus and uh, the other viral infections, a lot of times you know you have it. And so you, you, you don't, you're not going around, you know, passing it around.
So that was a very good question, very lengthy answer to, to a question. But what I see is concerning with the, the new results in Kankakee is the younger age of the people affected. Like for these 39 cases, uh, the majority of them were 40 and above. So there were five teenagers and seven in their 20s, five in their 30s, nine in their 40s. Those are kind of concerning numbers that they're, the age is getting uh, you know, younger. People are saying, well, they're testing for surgeries. So that's why we're getting more positives. I can only speak from St. Mary's because that's where, where I work, but I don't believe that to be true because we're not having a big bunch of positive tests for our surgeries. And surgeries don't really happen in the younger folks as opposed to, you know, to the older generation. So yes, we are doing more testing because everybody has surgery, but I don't think that that has the big impact on the positive testing. I think a lot of it is the, could be the protests that are happening, could be uh, the um, bars and stuff, staying, you know, maybe not social distancing or probably best physical distancing. People are outside and they think being outside, they don't need to wear, you know, face covering because we're outside. Well, just me talking and if I had it, my breath, you don't see it, but you don't see how far that breath goes. And that's why the six to 10 feet, because, and outside, if there's a wind, it can carry it farther than, than inside. The, the wearing of face masks is to, I wear a face mask to protect you. You wear a face mask to protect me. So that's truly what the face coverings are for. And I am a diehard baseball fan, so it really kills me not to be going to baseball games. But I, I listened to it on the radio, and a sportscaster said to me, not to me, I, it, it came to me and to my heart, but. He said over, over the radio, it's been about two weeks ago, he goes, you know, yes, we have wonderful rights in the United States and we honor our right to, to do for ourselves and to think for ourselves. But when it comes to face coverings, he goes, we kind of have to get that out of the way, let that go and develop a innate respect for human life because and that's it in a nutshell i'm wearing this face covering because i'm respecting everybody that's around me and wanting to keep them healthy uh and because i as i test my temperature every day i go through that questionnaire every day I have not been positive, but just because I'm not positive today, it doesn't mean 48 hours from now that I may become positive. Knock on wood, I, I hope not. But so by me wearing this face covering, I'm protecting the, the people's lives that I come in contact with. Yes, Lorraine. Yeah. Uh, baby, is a person have positive later? Can you have it again? Yes. Yeah, you okay. can. It, it, and I don't, it may still be, it, did they have negative tests between the positives? No, it, this morning, a family called me, we are going to start the school this, this week. Okay. 
two days. Yes. Okay. So the family call me and say, oh, I was positive. My husband was positive. Yes. Now my grandpa is positive. So yeah. the kids has to go to the school or, can, or has to be in home. And I say, they have to be in home, but I want to call the school to let you know. So the school say they cannot come after 10 days. The, the grandpa was positive, so while the 15th, they can come back to the school the 25th. Okay. And I told the mommy, you have to be care, yeah, like don't be in contact too close with your father. And she said, my husband and I, we already have it, so we cannot have it again. Well, it depends on how long ago they've had it. Okay. It depends on if they developed antibodies. Oh. And, and, and the deal is, is that usually if enough time has elapsed and the virus is totally out of their system, they do develop antibodies. And you, and you can say, yes, you probably will not get it again, but that's not a 100% guarantee. Oh. You know, it's with any uh, disease or any virus, it's, it's not a 100% guarantee. But once you're positive and you develop the antibodies, your chance of getting it again is very, is slim. But it also depends on how long ago they had it. You know, did they give it to the grandfather? We don't know. Was it 14 days between when they gave it, when they were in contact with the grandfather? You know, you don't want to say they gave it to him because you don't know. But it's, it's all that 14 days, you know, if they don't have any symptoms anymore, all, all of that. Uh, there's a lot of factors, so there's a lot of questions that, that have to be asked in that. And 10 days for the school, it really should be 14 days. Yeah, it, it really should be 14 days. Yes. And now schools, the schools are do, having to do certain, um, you know, guidelines. And I know the kids are staggering, I think, their school days. And I, each school district is a little bit different, so I don't know the, the guidelines that are happening in the schools. But they, and it's a good thing that, that you call the school to, to find out what to Yeah. While we're on the point of face masks, you guys happen to have yours on, right? Uh, the gentleman that came and went didn't, because <laughs> you want to make sure you have it on your nose and under your chin, so that everything is, is um, covered. Now, if you have one that has a nose piece on it, you want to start at the top of the nose piece and work your hand down. You don't want that nose piece to be tented up. You don't want it to be in a V on the top. Because that, if you wear glasses and it's at a V, it's going to fog up your glasses. Yes, yes, it, does. <laughs> yes it does. Otherwise, if you start at the top, make it a nice rounded to form your nose and go to your chin, then it, it shouldn't fog up your glasses. Not your, your cheeks, not your chin, your cheeks. And then make sure it's under your, your chin. I was a surgery nurse, so I've worn these many the times. And also if you kind of have the mask a little bit underneath your glasses, it may not, let's see. <laughs> because in church Sunday, it was fogging up my glasses. Terrible. Yes, yes, they do, they do. And if your mask has a blue outside, that's the outside. White is always the inside, unless it's a white and white. But it's usually the outside, the, the folds are pointing downward. Oh. And the inside, the folds are pointing upward. Oh, I got it yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Outside the folds go downward, 
inside the folds go up. Yeah, and you start up there and really curve it to your nose and outward. And it should prevent. It's better. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to tent it at the top of your nose. You want it to be nice and round to your nose. And if you happen to have the kind that have the ties, you tie it high up on your head, the top one, bottom one, around your neck. But I think most people have the looped ears and, and, and that. So, yeah, that's, a, that's kind of face mask 101. The other thing, if you have a face mask on and it becomes moist, then it really is no good, no good to, to have it on because moisture kind of null and voids the, the protection. If it's a material face mask, you can wash it in, um, or if it is, and if you don't want to wash it with your laundry, you can spray it with a disinfectant and put it out in the sun. Now I'm, I'm going to say spray the outside, don't spray the inside, but it's best to wash it, you know, with hot soapy water. And you can still put it out in the sun. Now the paper ones, they're saying one time use, but if you put those out in the sun to dry off, that they should be okay as long as they're not moist. You don't want it to be moist. You don't want any holes or any breakdown in, in the face covering. There's all kinds of uh, face coverings. There's these masks. There's those gator things that they pull up over their face, uh, a handkerchief. You know, anything that covers your nose and your mouth is uh, considered a face covering and is considered, you know, effective. Uh, yes, Lorraine. Um, what is the difference between a mask and a respirator? A respirator? A respirator, like you're talking about a true N95 yes, or, or that they are a big, bulky uh, f face covering that has, respirators have these big canisters on them and they're, they're just, they have more protection and, than, than this and healthcare workers that are working with uh, COVID-19 patients or other, not just COVID-19, but other highly contagious diseases will wear a respirator or they may wear an N95. Now, most of what they're, the ones that are in the community are K95s, and they're not health grade N95s. An N95 is a real thick, thicker face mask, and when you put one of those on, you breathe in and breathe out, and it seals it on your face, so, that, that's the difference. It's just a, 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 a stronger filtering system. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you can make face masks out of t-shirts, out of socks, out of, you know, there's so many different ways to do it. But like I said, the importance is is by us wearing a face mask, we're protecting the people around us. And that's also with the physical distancing. And the physical distancing isn't, like I said, isn't meant for, you know, the touch. And that, of course, you don't want to highly touch, but it's because of the spicules, the, what you breathe out that you don't see that, that travel, and they can travel that distance. So that's the reason behind yeah. Any questions about any of that? No? Do you 
you have an opinion about retesting? Yes. Oh, do I have an opinion about retesting? Well, I've been told no, it's not. Don't do it. Don't do it if you've been negative no, or if you've been positive. positive. You know, that is kind of an individual thought. Should you be retested? Now, some places require you to be retested and they require you to be retested twice because of the possibility of the, of the virus still being in your system. Some places don't require you because once you've let the time elapse and you have no symptoms, what is the validity of the test? So that is kind of an independent train of thought. So it's between your healthcare provider and if you're working your place of business requirements, uh, that is what you, you need to follow when it comes to testing. Yes. Because, you know, like we already said, one day you could be negative, the next day you could be positive. So it, it's just a, a matter of what the guidelines are that you need to follow for your physician and for your place of business or, or, or whatever. So that's a really good question. The, the next thing, you know, as healthcare providers, we have always said hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. That it, and that is not new to COVID-19. What is new is that I do think people are doing it more, which if we would have been doing it properly the first time or ever, forever, maybe we wouldn't have you know, had such a spread. Now, when I was in surgery, it was a two minute scrub to go into surgery and, and gown up and all that. Now for normal hand washing, it's 20 seconds. Well, what do people say? Well, what's 20 seconds? I don't, you know, I don't have a clock to look at. Sing happy birthday twice. Uh, say your ABCs twice. My dad says his prayers twice. <laughs> so whatever you come up with. Now, how do you wash your hands? Well, I always and always have. It's the nurse in me. I always pull a paper towel turn on the faucet, leave the paper towel on the faucet, wet my hands down, pick it up if I have to scrunch, scrunch, put the, the uh, make sure the top is what I touch, get my soap on my hands, suds it up, go in between your fingers. And this is how I've always done it. On the top of my hands, top of my hands, then I want to make sure I get my fingernails. So you go like this, go like this, then do it. And I was like, boy, that's how I've always washed my hands. And then do your thumbs, your thumbs, your wrists, and just get, get your, the soap everywhere. And when I rinse my hands, I've always, this is just the nurse in me. You don't have to do it this way. I always rinse my hands this way so that it's running down. And this and then the, that's why I've always done it. And then throw away my paper towels, shut off my water, turn off my lights, open my door. And that's why I like the he has that trash can by the door so that you can throw it away. Now that's and, and you think that it's, you know, it takes time, but it doesn't. You know, you can just, you know, do it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, and and that it's it's that is just something that should be done, anyhow. Not even because of COVID, that should be done. Now, let's say your place where it isn't soap and water. Oh, I, in my car I have hand sanitizer, I have wipes in my car, which nowadays are kind of a hard thing to come by, 
But so hand sanitizer, how do you properly use hand sanitizer? You want it to be at least 60% of, um, you know, of the alcohol in that. Now you want to make sure that it doesn't um, have I can, that preservative in it that is supposedly causing people issues, but I think they've gotten rid of it now. And so you just put some in your hands and make sure that you cover your whole hand and let it dry. Don't, don't wipe it off, just let it dry. And if you have one of those um, spritzers, you know, just spritz it, and get your hand totally wet and you know, get it, cover all surfaces and, and let, let it dry. So, now hand sanitizer is becoming a little bit easier to get. Uh, some stores have it in stock, some stores still, when it comes in, it's out the door. Just like the toilet paper thing, I will never understand the toilet paper. But I guess um, that's one thing you don't want to run out of, is toilet paper. So does anybody have any questions about masks, hand washing, hand sanitizing, anything of that nature? No? No? Well, I tell you, if, if uh, the hand washing, if that's one of the only things that comes out of this, that people wash their hands better, I'll be very glad. <laughs> Very, very glad. Uh, any questions that you guys have? Any, you know, Pat, you said you had some comments. What What are your comments? Because I'm interested. I, I know even nurses that are going around saying it's a hoax. I really don't know how you can believe that when people are actually getting sick, but I, I respect their opinion. I don't believe it's a hoax. It is a disease. It's the way it's been handled. And, and like you said, and I am not a political person. For the first time in my life, I got two signs in my yard. I yes. Two people I know. Yes. But I do vote. But yes. I think the way it's been handled is not right. Being That's a, how I feel. Being a political issue. Yes. Turning it into a political and a control issue. And yes, we do have rights, and like your uh, baseball announcer said, our rights are probably the most important thing we have here, what we've been given, this freedom that we've been given. But I thought, this is how I actually feel about it. When you close down the churches and the schools, which I think the schools for kids are essential, and you open the bars, that just does not make sense. Does not make sense to me. And then when these protests start in these massive groups, and I'm not lumping the looting in with the protesters. Correct. Because it's two totally different types of people. Correct. We have a right to protest and state our state our beliefs. Correct. And stand up for it. But are these protesters marching six to ten feet apart? No. So there's some things going on that have not been handled correctly. And I don't mean by the, the first responders, as they call them, the people that have to have their feet on the ground, mm -hmm. but by the people who are making these decisions all the way up. I'm not happy with the way it has been handled. And I said before, I've tried to live my life as normal as I can. The people I'm around are people who are not sick. I'm not going to stop being around them. I'm not going to stop going into the grocery store, but I do. Just exactly what you said about the mask. This is more of a courtesy. It is. It is. And I actually think it's doing any good because I'm not sick and you're not sick, so why are we sitting here with these masks on? We've been told that it's what we have to do. And I guess I, I'm a semi-rebellious old lady. <laughs> Well, you know, it's okay. That's my daughter-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm not, 
I don't have any symptoms, you don't have any symptoms, Lorraine doesn't have any symptoms. But in reality, have I been tested lately? No, because I've not had symptoms. Is, is it 100% that I don't have COVID-19? No. So that's why I wear the face mask. 